Hi, we're sitting here with Steve Earle, photographer, um, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about how he got started in photography today. Hey Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, so I grew up in Brooklyn, and uh, I was that kid in junior high school and then high school who was in the camera club. I was that guy. And um, my dad was a really good amateur photographer, so I grew up an apartment full of beautiful black and white photographs that um, di it didn't, that itself didn't determine that I would be a photographer, but growing up with that art around me, um, and then as I said, joining the camera club, I really, I really got addicted to having a camera with me. Um, and I walked around high school with the camera around my neck, uh, you know, that guy that maybe people would make fun of, uh, but I loved it, and I would snap pictures, and um, in, in the long run, I ended up going to um, art school, for, School of Visual Arts in New York, and it actually uh, gave me a career. Uh, so that's how my photography career started, and uh, I guess a lot of it I have to thank my dad for. Uh, so how did you move from New York to Los Angeles? What made you do that? You know, it was a time where um, I was going through a personal thing and decided to leave New York and go to LA and get a convertible and stay there for a year <laughs> and come back after six months. Uh, and in the end, I fell in love with LA so much that uh, literally 25 years later, I'm still here. That's amazing. Yeah. So do you remember the first photo you took that made you decide that this is what you wanted to do? I don't remember the first photo, but I remember the reason that I remember what pushed me to become a fashion photographer, which is what I consider myself. Um, in the School of Visual Arts, I had a, a, um, a thesis teacher named Jimmy Moore. Jimmy Moore, what, the great thing about SVA is all the, the teachers were mostly working photographers um, who would teach two nights a week or one day a week, etc. And I was lucky enough to, to have Jimmy Moore, who was a former assistant to Richard Avedon. So at the time, Jimmy was literally shooting for Harper's Bazaar. And um, he and I, he took me and another photographer sort of under his wing and allowed us to come on his shoots when we weren't in school. And that's when I knew I wanted to be a fashion photographer and certainly attempt to be one. Uh, so I would say that's really where it started. And um, it, it really forged the path that I took. Well, I understand that you were part of the Studio 54 scene or you went there one <laughs> night. Or, well, tell so, us about how okay. that happened. So um, one of the photographers that I assisted, so while I was in school, um, I assisted part-time, I assisted on uh, during the summer, I got a chance to assist photographer Francesco Scavullo, who was a huge photographer in the 70s and the 80s. And um, his studio manager was my roommate in college. So Francesco was such a good guy that when Studio 54 was happening, he would take me and my friend Dave to Studio 54, he'd put his arm around me, we'd walk in, because if anyone's aware of how tough it was to get in there, um, that was one way I got in. And after a while, I got to know the, the doorman, which is what everyone sought out to do, and I was able to wander in um, kind of whenever I wanted, uh, unbelievably. And one night I went to a party and, and had my camera with me, and there was Andy Warhol sitting there, and I nervously went up to him and asked, literally asked him if he minded if I took his picture. And fortunately, with a big smile, he said, sure. And as I raised up my camera to my eye, and I was definitely nervous, he, he very quickly raised his camera and took a picture of me. At least the flash went off. Whether it was filming the camera, I don't know, but it probably was. And that's where you get this photograph here. I took one frame, one click, it's in focus, and that's the story behind that photograph. That's amazing, and that's yeah. the piece that we have in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, and I've, it, I've met through the years people that really know his archives and, and, and know what's what's um, out there 
as far as Andy Warhol portraits. And I've been told it's, it's the only one where he's totally engaged with the photographer taking his picture. So I like to think that anyway. So <laughs> I, think it make, I think it makes it pretty unique. And, and I do have that memory of that flash going off in my face. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting for me to have that all these years later. I love it. And we're very happy to have it for sale at the show. Um, yeah. Well, also, I happen to personally know that you love cars and that you collect cars. And we don't know which one is your favorite. Which one, is, which one do you love most? So I do love cars, and thank you for uh, noticing. I know you do as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I have five classic cars, um, and I would say my 1966 Chrysler Imperial is uh. probably my favorite because it's, it's the rarest car I have. Everyone mistakes it for a Lincoln Continental, which it's not. Um, it's the same year and model that was used in the Bruce Lee TV series, uh, The Green Hornet. Um, and it has, and like you, I love uh, mid-century modern design. I do. So this 66 Chrysler has um, beautiful thick leather seats. It has walnut panels in the car. Um, and it's, it's just spectacular. Uh, and it's 20 feet long. Um, and it's, again, it's rare, and I would say that's, that's my favorite, if I had to pick one. Isn't it hard to find parts for that one? It's hard to find parts, um, but, you know, fortunately American cars are fairly basic, the old ones. Uh -huh. um, so I have a pretty brilliant mechanic, um, and I am going to give them a shout out. <laughs> um, I know you turned me on to them. Yeah, exactly. Who they, they're, they're one, specifically their one um, mechanic there. Uh, can fabricate parts. So you either go through, um, you go online to try and find a part, or if there's something that's not available, if you're lucky enough like I am, you can have something fabricated. And that's what I do, and I've, had, I've, owned, uh, I've owned that car since, I've probably owned that car 20 years now, and um, have never had any serious problems with it, and have replaced parts, but always found something, or had something made. Um, and it runs like a brand new car. Wow, so. that's amazing. It's a beautiful car. Thank you. Um, tell us about your work at Sports, Sports Illustrated. So I, uh, again, I was very fortunate. Um, I shot nine issues for that magazine. And that, that allowed me and my crew, uh, got to take all my guys with me, uh, to travel, literally travel around the world um, a couple times uh, to shoot different issues. Um, and it also goes to show, um, there's a lot of great photographers out there, obviously. You have an incredible supermodel, you have great hair and makeup, you're in Caribbean, you're in Russia, wherever you are. Um, it'd be hard not to get a great photograph. What I had, I had the relationship. It's all about a relationship. Uh, the fashion editor was uh, a woman named Diane Smith, who I met as an assistant. She was the editor when I was an assistant. She was at Harper's Bazaar. And I remember back then, her saying to me, we, we became good friends, saying to me, someday when you're a photographer and I'm not at Bazaar, hopefully I'll be in a position that I can hire you for my next magazine and we can do shoots together, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and, and the truth is so many people say stuff like that and, and um, I knew better than to assume that would happen or I knew better than to count on that happening. Um, but she was one of those people that she um, honored her word and years later my agent called me and he goes, you're not going to believe we just put you on hold for Sports Illustrated. That was my first one. Wow. Um, and that lasted nine issues, which is pretty pretty good. Um, run for photographer. I mean, every photographer in the world wants to shoot for that magazine. Um, it's not easy getting in, so I found myself lucky. That's great. Well, talk about um, what you're doing now. So, well, I have been working four months. Um, 
like all of us, yes. You know, I shoot, <laughs> I shoot editorial. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really a fashion photographer. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I love shooting portraits. Um, yeah, and you do a lot of those at Siren Studio, too, right? I, I've done a lot of Siren Studios. Yeah, you should tell us about your relationship with Siren Studios. Uh, well, Siren Studios um, is a, a brand that was born a dozen years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we built a uh, ground up a huge campus on Sunset Boulevard. Um, and uh, a couple of my partners are, are in the movie business. A couple of partners, uh, foreign partners, were um, um, Google guys. So we had a real, a couple of music guys, a real um, diverse group of partners. Um, and we just created this really cool brand. And, and at one point, we had. Um, eight or nine different stages throughout Los Angeles. Um, you know, at this point now, everything's, everything's um, been trimmed down, um, but uh, it was a great relationship, and uh, I've shot most of my major uh, campaigns there. Um, awesome. But I started, but it's funny, I'll get back to Sports Illustrated for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a music fan my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, I attempted to play um, Base years ago, I was in a couple of small bands, um, as every probably college kid was. Um, and unfortunately, I ended up quitting when I realized that I would never be, I never I never had the gift to be where I'd want to be to, to try and make it. So I got out of it and really pursued my photography. And then here we are years later because of my photography. Um, I've had the opportunity to shoot a lot of music, musicians and forge great friendships with some of them. Um, to this day, a couple of my closest friends are musicians. So I'm really happy to feel like I, I, I still have the music a part of me. Um, I feel like you were going to get like a place to store all your cars with somebody else that was, I can't remember what band it yes, was. Yes, yes. And, and you were asking me yes. like, do I know any place where we could store this many cars? <laughs> well, well, I have a friend of mine who's a, um, a very accomplished musician and he was gonna build a recording studio. Um, I have another friend who is, um, he and his wife have a, a clothing line and he's also a photographer and he's also a big car collector and um, a, um, an actress that I know, um, who doesn't live far from here, has uh, a few like gangster era cars, mm -hmm. and all of us really have no place to put our cars. So we were going to all go in, and, and I reached out to you and um, find a warehouse or some type of cool facility uh -huh. that we could create this big creative hub for all of us. I love this idea. Photo studio, recording studio. Um, um, Car museums. Yeah, car or whatever. <laughs> you know, but then as, as you know, especially with real estate, and then you know, we didn't want to be somewhere far away. We didn't want to be in Glendale, we wanted to be in Los Feliz, so like Atwater, which just proved to be just unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So for the time being we put that on the we've shelved that for now. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to the lockdown I had um, half a dozen photo shoots all set up, ready to go, magazines, etc. all of course stopped. Right. Um, little by little, a couple of them are coming back. Uh, I have two um, album packaging shoots that I'm lining up for, um, in July. Nice. So that's exciting because, I, again, I love music and yeah. to get to, to photograph musicians and be around musicians at that level makes me happy. That's wonderful. So I got that, that happening, and I have a collaboration coming up with uh, another artist, you know, Gregory Siff, yeah. who is taking my Warhols, um, large size, and he's going to paint on them. And um, that's something I'm super excited about because we already did the prototypes of them, smaller. And they're, they're, they're unlike anything that's been done. Um, there's plenty of people have collaborated with Warhol and painted over and all this. And, and everything is is, is um, interesting, but I think you know I'm biased because he's a very close friend of mine. Um, what he showed me is pretty cool, and really excited to show 
for our community um, what we've done together and to do a collaboration with a really good friend also from Brooklyn uh, is something I'm excited about and, and that's happening soon hopefully um, by the fall. I love it. I can't wait to see these. Well, thanks Steve. Thanks for coming by. Um, we're so, let's, does anybody have any questions they want to ask Steve? Anybody have any uh, questions? Nope. Okay then. Well, we'll Thanks, um, everyone. Okay, bye Thanks, Steve. Colin. Thank you so bye. much. Take care. Bye. Okay, so now we